Mr. Makta Diop, World Bank Vice President, Africa Region, Dr. Marshall De Paul Kong, African Union Commissioner for Human Resources, Science and Technology, Honorable Ministers, Distinguished Delegates. Good afternoon. And although most of you have already been in our country a couple of days, and this is uh, the closing session of the meeting, let me still take this opportunity to say welcome to Rwanda. I would also like to most sincerely thank the World Bank and other partners for their support in organizing this very important forum. The importance of science, technology, research and innovation cannot be overstated. They are critical enablers which shape the social economic transformation of nations. In sub-Saharan Africa, they can drastically improve standards of living. But to unlock this potential, Africa must have well-trained science and technology professionals. As it stands, I'm told on around 25% of tertiary education students in Africa are enrolled in science, engineering, and technology. In fast-growing countries, such as Korea, China, and Taiwan, this figure is close to 50%. In an effort to address this gap, the October 2007 Connect Africa Summit made a recommendation to establish five centers of excellence in each sub-region of Africa, and the Vice President of the World Bank has alluded to that. These centers would support the development of a critical mass of science and technology skills required for the continent's advancement. The rationale was that for Africa to utilize and benefit from global scientific research, it needs scientists who communicate and collaborate with their peers around the world on specific regional and international projects. In this respect, higher education has a unique and important role to play in resolving the skills gap in Africa. During the last two decades, Rwanda has put in place governance and physical infrastructures to develop national science, technology, and innovation. We know that harnessing their potential and integrating them into Rwanda's development plans is critical to achieving our national goals. Here in Kigali, we opened an ICT center of excellence in conjunction with the African Development Bank. The government also invited Carnegie Mellon University and happily accepted to establish 
and operate a master's degree program in Rwanda based on their strong tradition of research and innovation. We look forward to seeing the first cohort of students graduate later this year. So this gives us the belief and conviction that uh, most of these uh, otherwise seemingly very difficult uh, undertakings can uh, actually produce results. This is also the reason why in collaboration with our East African community partners, we have agreed to establish the East African Science and Technology Commission based here in Rwanda. Distinguished audience, leveraging opportunities in science and technology contributes to the building of capacity across many sectors, including health, agriculture, trade, and industry, infrastructure, environment, and information and communication technology, all of which are key to development. They will help us fight against infectious diseases, increase food production, promote industrialization, add value to natural resources, and arrest degradation of the environment. Better developed scientific and technological capability will also help increase and diversify our exports, as well as attract private sector investment, a critical factor in creating prosperity on our continent. I'm therefore pleased to endorse the outcomes doing that even on behalf of other brothers and colleagues, the leaders on our continent of this conference as outlined in the communique that was read to us a while ago. I welcome the commitment to strengthen and mobilize resources for building capacity in science and technology in our pursuit of Africa's social economic transformation. By the way, this conference would have uh, even had uh, much higher level representation in terms of uh, leaders on our continent who would have uh, attended. The, I was only a slight coincidence that uh, those uh, distinguished leaders could not make it this time around because they'll be with us in a few days ahead for different events. So in a way, the timing was uh, or created a conflict and that's how they couldn't be here. Otherwise, I'm just saying this to mean that uh, what we've done here and the great job you have already done uh, is well appreciated and, uh, by other leaders and we are all committed uh, to make sure that we make uh, uh, huge improvements in this regard. I would like once again to pay a special tribute to the World Bank for spearheading this launch part of uh, for a high profile, high impact dialogue on higher education, science and technology, and technical training 
in Africa that are so crucial. The support of new partners such as Brazil, China, India, and Korea who are investing in the development of science and technology capacity on the continent is very much appreciated. I look forward to follow up action, including the upcoming regional workshop on the Partnership for Applied Sciences, Engineering and Technology and the Higher Education Summit in November this year. Our collective commitment must be followed by concrete action to drive innovation through science, technology, and research for the development of our people and our continent. Once again, I, want, I, I wish to thank all the partners that have been mentioned here and those that uh, have not been able to be present but have continued to be of force for good in this development. And on that note, I am pleased to close this meeting on this high and very optimistic note. I thank you for your kind attention. <laughs>